Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You are I, I messed that up big time. And I'm not I'm not gonna edit it out. I'm gonna keep it in because that's how we roll here. But I don't know how I can mess up the introduction. But anyway, that's me ranting to myself now. You are listening to Going Commando. <laughs> I'm indeed your host, Tank Rodriguez. Uh, today is Thursday. <laughs> We're recording. Uh, and I'm joined by my host uh, via Zoom. Uh, we got uh, Dirty, Dirty Derek. How are you doing today, sir? <laughs> I'm good, buddy. I'm good. I, uh, I came here to talk about movies and chew bubblegum, and I am all out of bubblegum. Well, that's good. That's yeah. really good. Which I guess we'll just talk me, about movies. Which reminds me, just so we can do a little sneaky peek. I know we haven't really told everybody else, and I know Jimothy doesn't know either. Uh, but I, I think we should talk. I mean, like the way you suggested for episode 100 uh, that we do. Oh, like I do a, know. We do an episode where we talk about they live. That way it's all encompassing with everything. We'll try to, I mean, I'm not sure how the relationship aspect falls into it. Dude, uh, bromance. Bromances. Bromance, that's right. Well, yeah. plus he he's kind of has a, a thing with. Um, with Meg Foster's. Meg character. Foster, thank you. I mean, I just, every time I think of Meg Foster, even though she's been a million things, I think of Eva Lynn from the Masters of the Universe movie. Because oh. she was so perfect for that role. Anyways, she was. Yeah. I thought you were, were going to say she, she thought of. Uh, yeah, they are hypnotic. Uh, I thought yes. you were going to say though. I did see her in. Uh, in I watched uh, Thirty One again the other day, and uh, yeah. man, she just has not aged well. But those those eyes though, those eyes are yeah endearing. There's a certain point when when not just women, just older people continue to work out. And it sort of does them a disservice because then they look extra sinewy and Veiny. like they look like beef jerky, basically. And yeah. especially for people who tan. So sometimes it's better to just, just look, yeah, get a little they, chubby. <laughs> get a little chubby as you get older. Yeah, yeah. Just look, like leathery. Yeah. yeah. Stay out of the sun and eat a lot of foods. Eat, yeah. some, sna- eat some snacks. Exactly. Or just, you know, yeah. you, don't have to, you don't have to go super hard. You're not... Like, yeah, there's something like, about yeah. like some elderly person who's super vascular and it's like, ooh. You, you know... You know who I was really sad about that, that got work done? Because I always, I mean, like, in, in the most bro way possible, I always thought he was, like, a really good-looking dude. It was Mickey, Mickey Rourke? Rourke. Yeah. 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 How did dude. you know? Okay, but so Mickey Rourke, <laughs> though. Because he's, he's the one he's the one guy I think of when you think of plastic surgery that could have gone wrong. Yeah, just yes. Mickey Rourke. He was so goddamn handsome. Yeah. And he was, like, rumble fish and stuff. But you know why he started getting plastic surgery? Because he, he was a boxer. So he uh-huh. left. He left acting to be a boxer. Right. And but he kept getting. It was like a. He would get, you know, beat up, and his face would get a little broken. And he needed to go to get plastic surgery to fix it. And then it just sort of, I think, became an addiction. Mm-hmm. Got hand. But yeah, you look at Mickey Rourke, circa the wrestler versus Mickey Rourke circa Rumblefish, and circa, it's like they're two different people. Circa Marlboro Man. Exactly. Uh. But yeah, I mean, you know, he, there's like, there's him. Uh, there's I, I still think the the most tragic of all physical deformations was uh, um, uh, 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 I'm getting a million. We're, we're we're playing the what is in James's brain? Uh, Marlon Brando. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. Yes. No, that's the name of the game. When every any time, exactly. What is James' brain? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the answer. I'm sorry. I was getting. I was getting. I was getting work messages. Uh, was the, actually the thing. But uh, so no, it was a uh, young Marlon Brando, unbelievably good looking. Probably one of the most perfect looking man ever because he was both i've said this before it's becoming a weird thing for me but um he was both like super masculine and also super pretty which is a very hard combination to come across uh and then you know young marlon brando to fucking apocalypse now marlon brando is like um but you know we also had uh, val kilmer didn't didn't age super well either well but, um, i think but he, he was, was sick now he was yeah. le- legitimately sick and yeah. i think he covered up his throat a lot yeah. And then, of course, he puffed up too, and yeah. Um, yeah. But that it, it was, says that was the says the three uh, male models that are recording this podcast. Anyways. Hello, <laughs> guys. Hello. Hey, but Follow me why, on in- no, Instagram. That's why we talk about it because we live vicariously through their good looks. Exactly. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I definitely don't live vicariously through the later Marlon Brando, 
like rumble fish turn to jellyfish like that's yeah well i yeah. do i i i i uh I live vicariously through old Marlon Brando because I can't eat mashed potatoes anymore. And that dude definitely enjoyed his mashed potatoes. So Time out. Um, Explain. No, he's, 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 he's cutting weight for the big fight. So, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's, getting... not, eat, he's oh. not eating carbs. Hey, really quick. Yeah. Um, so I know you wouldn't you'd be able to tell by looking at it, you know, looking at me. Um, mm-hmm. One, this is a podcast. Uh, two, uh, two oh. if, you, if you did see me in person, you would never believe it. But I used to be a bodybuilder. And so when it comes to bodybuilding, you have to eat clean. And I love mashed potatoes. A good alternative, cauliflower, cauliflower mashed potatoes. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, if you ever come, like if we ever set a date, I'll bring you some, man. I will make you my, my cauliflower mash. It tastes I've, I've, had, I've had some decent ones. If you have some great, a great recipe, I'll try it. But I've had some decent ones. It's like cauliflower um, is a good re- – uh, they even use it for pizza crust. It's like I've, cauliflower I've made- and mozzarella. I've made that, and it's so good. Mm. But yeah, we're, that's what this podcast is now about: health and fitness. That, that's, that's right. It's called it's called get your guns out. Uh, it's called going commando because we all look like Arnold Schwarzenegger from no, the film it, Commando. No, it's, not, it's no longer going commando; it's going clean. All right, so, going clean, <laughs> clean living. That's gonna be the thing. Every single time we do a podcast, now we're just gonna give you some clean living advice before we talk about movies. That's good. Hey, and real quick, while we're on that, how, how what's what's the weight at now? Uh, how much have you lost, Jimothy? I've lost 21 pounds. He was looking swell the other day when he was being a goddamn hero and saving a bird. That's right. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, right. You saved a bird. You wouldn't tell the story? I, I thought sure. the other day, too, because before you say that, I was driving through uh, a traffic the other day, and I, and I saw this, like, big, burly construction worker, like, out running around the traffic. And I'm like, what the fuck is this met at doing? And he was trying to find this baby duck and he was trying to chase it to like put it on the sidewalk. I'm like, oh, he's channeling his inner dreams over there. Like <laughs> trying to get the birdie on the sidewalk. Anyway. Hey man, look, you know, oh, sorry, innocent yeah. animals. <laughs> so I, yeah, we were down at the Riverwalk enjoying, uh, you know, a nice, you know, uh, day off uh, out amongst the people getting the COVID, uh, helping, uh, helping the, uh, the ramping up numbers again, um, but no. Number so one. we were walk- number one. <laughs> we, we were we were walking uh, downtown, and there was a baby. Uh, there was a bird, and he was splashing around in the water. You could tell he was trying to get out, but he couldn't get out. Um, so we ended up trying to find you know something to get him out. And I found the perfect branch that was like sort of like almost like a big Y, like, um, and I was able to actually get. He, first, he wasn't going to get on the branch, but I basically got it like underneath him and like pulled it up so like eventually he like he stepped on it and as soon as his little birdie feet grabbed the branch he was not letting go so but literally he was so tired i had the branch uh, and there's like so you saw photos on my social media i'm holding the branch and he's inches away from my face and he's just he's his little birdie chest is heaving he's like his little eyes are closing um so uh we put him up high in some um uh, brand, uh, and some bushes uh, next to the river walk to sort of let him dry out because the problem is birds weigh literally nothing. I don't know if you've ever had a bird like on your finger, but they it's like they weigh nothing. Um, so hollow. once they get weight, what, what like wet, all that moisture in that water like really weighs them down and they can't they can't fly. So um, and he needs a little bird he needed to rest. So we put him high up in, in some bushes and uh, came back twenty minutes later and he was gone. So uh, so yeah, a cat bird. took him. Well, that's the thing. It's like like an eagle, but we specifically put him really deep, like under some heavy bush, so that like predators or whatever couldn't see him. Hopefully, so that's right because they have those heat vision. Exactly, those, like, those the like the predator. Like the predator, he right. doesn't come to hunt humans. He just comes to hunt birds. He's a pastime. Right. So, well, it was a very noble thing of you, uh, Sir Jimothy James Dean to save that bird and uh maybe someday he will grow up to be a big strong bird and he will repay the favor by not crapping on your cart exactly it'll be like the giant birds in lord of the rings that fl- gan- right. the giant eagles that take gandalf hey you know what dude at, at the rate 2020 is going that that is a possibility okay exactly. it's gonna get through the, it's gonna be the polarity of the eclipse with the su- with the dust storm that's coming in it's gonna create mutant birds and that bird is gonna remember you uh <laughs> that you saved it before mutant well you know it's Oz- catastrophic <laughs> You know what was honestly my thought when I uh, afterwards is uh, in uh, the movie uh, Anchorman 
when the mm-hmm. you know the the they're gonna get attacked by the uh, bear, but then the dog comes and he's like, "I saved your," you know. I was like, "I was like maybe maybe I'm gonna get yeah. attacked by birds, but then a little bird, the little birdie will come and be like, no, he's I, he's a good one." I thought you were gonna say it when he gets attacked by the shark. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> "I saved you! I saved you! No, don't attack me!" <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> the bear works too. But it was I think. I digress. 20 minutes into we haven't talked about a movie yet. So. That's okay. Exactly. That's, That's absolutely a... fine, man. Because yeah. we, okay. we are going to jump into it. And last but not least, we have Jimmy the <laughs> James Dean. <laughs> yeah, you didn't done the intro yet. <laughs> Who is this guy? How are you I'm, doing today? You doing I'm, right? do, I'm not going to give any subs because we're too late into the podcast for subs. So okay. I'm doing good. Okay. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. But, uh, but all right, so what did right. I watch this week? I'm sorry. Hey, what did you exactly watch this week? That's was, was exactly <laughs> what I was going to ask y'all. What did y'all watch this week, gents? Well, I, I don't let, since Jimothy James Dean didn't get a chance to do his subs, I'll let you go first, sir, about what you watched. Uh, so I've actually, so in the action kind of end of the genre, the end of the TV film spectrum, um, I've been kind of weirdly obsessed with watching, well, I, let me rephrase that. I started weirdly obsessed with rewatching all the Netflix Marvel shows because hmm. um, I really wanted to see that first season of Daredevil um, because um, I was just uh, something came up about um, uh, um, do 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 do. What is James? <laughs> my... What's the actor? Geez, one of my favorite actors. He uh, he plays Kingpin. Um, he's the great. Who is who is Vincent D'Onofrio? For Vincent the D'Onofrio. I don't know why my my of all Derek names. for three hundred. Yeah. So Vin. Oh, Vinny, only Vinny D. Um. Uh. So I won't really wanted to see him because I still think he. That's the. I don't give a shit what people say about Loki, and the entire Marvel live action, you know, spectrum. Um. Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin is the most three-dimensional, most interesting villain they've ever done, hands down. Um, playing him as this sort of weird, almost like autistic, you know, um, super megalomaniac, but who's, you know, has this weird, you know, uh, affection for, you know, his lady friend. Like, it's just a very interesting um, way to go. And they a lot of it was inspired by the comics, but Vincent D'Onofrio's performance specifically was really interesting. So I really wanted to watch it. And, you know, again, I still think the first season holds up. I still think the first season of Daredevil is the best thing they've, they've did as far as the Netflix shows um, with the first season of um, Luke Cage being pretty good. Um, I think the Jessica Jones, first season of Jessica Jones was harder to get through the second time watching it than it was the first time for some reason. I think maybe because I knew where the story was going. Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I got to Daredevil season two and I was like, I, I can't I, I got it halfway through and I'm like I don't know if I can finish this it's like become tedious and like what didn't bother me as much originally which was like a lot of the side character stories like Foggy Nelson and um, Karen I I just can't deal with it man I can't deal with it and like the season two of Punisher has you know the introduction of the season two of Daredevil is the introduction of, of the Punisher and I think again he's a great he does a good performance he's too small to play the Punisher but that's a nitpicky thing but um but you know he's such a great actor, and they did uh, some interesting things with him. But even that can't save the show, and it's it's kind of weird. But I was super stoked to sort of rewatch it, and then now I'm like okay. I'm less than half of the way through this this the whole output, and I just I couldn't finish it. So or I'll well, I, we, I I maybe I will, but it it's be, it's become tedious. So yeah, but fucking yeah, Iron I, Fist, forget it. it. I couldn't do it. What what I really find super funny is like it, it's opposite, right? Because with Marvel movies they do so much better than DC and what DC does for TV shows, they can't t- Marvel can't touch it because they, they've yet to have one. I think agents of shield is probably the longest running Marvel television show. Yeah. Yet. And I mean, and that probably is wholeheartedly based on the fact that agent Colson's by the primary character and he's been in the Avengers movie. And what I do like is that's the one show that ties in nicely to the rest of the universe. Whereas like yes. the other shows, I don't see any really, like I've never really seen any connection. I agree with you though. I, I couldn't get through Jessica Jones. Like I, like I watched a little bit of Daredevil, um, but uh, Punisher, I, I didn't mind, but I, I do agree. Like he doesn't, he doesn't strike. He's a great actor, John Barathol. But yeah. um, 
but he is he would not be my pick for Frank Castle. Um, I mean, the thing is, like, he facially looks like him. He carry, but he's like five nine. Like you know, like I just I he's like the guy Charlie. Um, the guy who plays Derek. I I should not have a pod. I should not be on a podcast where I have to talk about actors because this whole name thing is getting to me, but, but the actor who plays Charlie, Charlie Aldred, whatever his name is, the guy who plays Dare, Daredevil, he's not a big guy either. He's in good shape. But he's not a big guy, but you know, Dare, yeah, it's a weird nerd thing. He's just, John Barenthal is a great actor, but he just doesn't seem like physically imposing in the way that, you know, the, the Frank Castle in my head is, but, but it, you know, he does, he's a great actor. You know, people wanted um, um, Ray, um, not Ray Winstone, um, Ray Stevens either. Um, <laughs> oh good lord the uh oh, thomas jane no 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 uh, um the so uh in the purge 2 um i've got a great actor he, he oh, played uh was it frank, 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 frank Grillo? frank Grillo. i mean he's, he's kind of the exact same thing frank Grillo in purge the purge 2 is basically playing almost like the punisher but they want him to play him uh but he's again he's like five seven five eight like he's not a big guy either where Ray, Ray Stevens, who played him in Warzone, is like 6'3". So, um, which is a, weird, it's a nerd thing. Like, it shouldn't matter, but it does in my nerd head. Just because I've, you know, I had a Punisher t-shirt when I was 10 years old, which was decades and decades ago. So, I just have, I've had years of this mental image of him in my head. So, but anyways, that's a weird random thing. But yeah, basically just, I've been watching that almost nonstop and a bunch of anime that you guys don't want to get into. But anyways, <laughs> what about you, Dan? <laughs> Wait, wait a second. Which anime yeah. were you watching? Watching a ton. Um, I'm watching um, uh, Hunter x Hunter or Hunter Hunter. Um, I'm watching. Um, they uh, Hulu has Rama One Half, which was my favorite anime for years. So I'm rewatching some of that, and I'm 58 episodes into One Piece. Um, Why? Why? Just because. Why? Why? Are you think you're cool now? Is that what oh, it is? no, no. Oh, look, I'll tell you, you're cool without watching it. Yeah, why, I, why does anyone do that? I don't get it. Like, there's what, 8, watch 000, One Piece? There's, yeah, there's 8,000 episodes. They're all filler episodes. And you don't need to watch it. Well, I mean, I, I didn't. I, this is like my fifth time trying. And the first four times I couldn't get into it. But I sort of put it on so I could draw. And then the longer it went into, um, the more I was like, okay, I can kind of get into it. The animation gets much better by you know the episode 20 mark um but then i also i've seen a lot of weird like random images of it of like like characters be like what the fuck is that yeah and like oh it's episode 600 of one piece i'm like what so it's just morbid curiosity at this point but um very morbid but yeah. all right just yeah, seeing if you can do it hmm. it's yeah so i i actually i didn't watch a ton in the way of action movies this week i've been really just binge watching the hell out of, out of horror movies, which is for our other, um, yes. other podcasts. Which we will definitely talk about. We will definitely talk about. Um, I did watch, uh, I did watch Save Live. It's horror Jason. So, you know, uh, I thought, well, I check, I'll check it out. Um, I watched, I, I watched Cobra. Um, Cause you can, you can never, you can never go wrong with that. Um, I watch, it's a horror movie, but I, it's got a lot of action. And I watched Dog Soldiers. Which uh, I just talked about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great, uh, great werewolf movie, uh, which totally, totally caught me off guard. I hadn't seen it in, in a while. Um, so yeah, I, I again, not not a ton of uh, not a ton of action movies. I started rewatching a little bit because our, our topic today is uh, franchises. So I started rewatching the Fast and the Furious movies. Um, so I'm up to I just passed Tokyo Drift. Uh, nice, but, you know, Tokyo Drift doesn't it gets a lot of flack. I like Tokyo I, Drift. I, I liked Tokyo Drift. I think it's like a the, nice. Fr- Go ahead. No, I was gonna say I I like the uh, I mind the character. You know, I uh, was it a uh, little Romeo's in it, a little Romeo, yeah. and uh, but it's got a it's got a guy who plays a uh, Han in the of future course. series too, and I like him as an actor. So uh, you know, I I thought it was it was actually way better than originally uh, originally kind of hyped up to be. I know it was like yeah. the one without. It's got Vin Diesel at the end of it, so you know what? Yeah, I just think it's funny that like the the main actor didn't get to come back, but they even brought Han back from like from the dead, <laughs> you know, like and not the main actor to go back into the rest of the franchise. Well, so he's coming back for the next one. Is he? 
yeah so they oh, that's uh, awesome that, yeah. i actually like that idea yeah <laughs> look at look at james rolling his eyes <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like i wish that would just tokyo drift right off a cliff <laughs> well that's the funny not... thing about that movie about that franchise is the more ridiculous it gets the more people are are so tuned into it um yeah you know i, I remember watching the like when i was re-watching it watching the first one i'm like it's good, but like the drama is actually kind of boring, boring me knowing what like I could watch the the Fast Five and and really take it up a notch. Uh, I was like, can we just get over the the Telenova uh, melodrama here and uh, just just go for it? So like I I just find it was progressively kind of gotten a little more ridiculous over time. But I think that's that's kind of the interesting thing about um, you know sometimes about franchises is they you either go like super ridiculous or well, they're trying to get like super serious or well, well what are you gonna do i mean like you gotta evil knievel it if you're gonna continue that franchise you can't just have races like the whole time and you know and a little bit of action i mean you have to like step it up i mean what are they on like n- 10 9 or 10 already uh, yeah they're going into nine i think jeez yeah does that include and, well, the uh hobbs and shaw well, it's a, uh, that, would, that would be a spinoff so that's I mean, what i'm saying right so yeah. that that's technically 10 in the franchise i mean yeah. 10 in the <clears throat> yeah which would be its own which is funny because like they, that's the thing is like they're the everybody loved the dynamic between jason statham and the Rock so much that they created this other other spin-off uh movie but i i, I think there's still like this huge beef between the rock is. and and uh and vin diesel i don't know i i just don't know how like the rock seems like such a down-to-earth guy like and uh and I don't know if it's just Vin Diesel just kind of being a prick or like prima donna, but uh, well, I, I thought think his so. The Rock's main beef though is actually with uh, that fucking piece of shit. What what's his name? The rapper, um, oh, or Ty- no, Ty- Ty- Tyrese. Oh, he was a Tyrese. model. Yeah, but it's him yeah. and Tyrese, I think, are have the main beef. Um, really? and they because they the writers strike and they were trying to, yeah, I forget all the details, but it was a thing of Tyrese didn't think you know the rock should make the solo movie that he should hang with it was some bullshit who gives a shit what tyrese thinks anyways but um yeah yeah i don't know like i can't i, I tried to watch uh uh that Hobbs shaw movie and it's so dumb i only actually watched it because i there was like roman reigns was in it and i wanted to see if he actually could act and the answer is yeah. no um and how how it a date you know helen helen mirren she's great uh-huh. uh is she in know, that yeah she plays uh she plays Jason Statham's. Uh, she plays. Oh, Shaw's that's right. Mom. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, mom yeah. in prison. Yeah, um, that's right. So I don't know, man. Yeah. I just think like uh, I just think these are. This is a franchise that's just very, uh, very kind of a, a dumb fun franchise. As I call it. Now it is not my pick for tonight's uh, franchise to discuss, but it is. I debated it. Um, it's primarily. It's, because, it's Transformers for adults. I mean, that, I mean, that's what it's really come down to. I got to say, though, I'm like sorry, Jake, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's okay. It happens often. Does it? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Go. No, it just reminded me, one of my favorite uh, stupid-ass people news stories was the lady who tried to sue the movie theater for the movie Drive because it didn't have enough driving in it. And she said <laughs> that, you know, the trailers made it seem like it was part of the, you know, the Fast and Furious franchise. And I was just like, Lady, you should drink all the cyanide ever produced because you should. You're using up valuable air. Somebody else could be breathing. Like, hey, on that note too. I mean, I, as stupid as it is, if you haven't listened to the Drive soundtrack, please do yourself a favor. Oh, the Drive soundtrack's great. Yeah, it's great. It's amazing. Uh, <clears throat> hey, but really quick, you know, um, uh, didn't do it on purpose. Oh my God, quit, quit looking at me like that. Anyway, uh, that was James. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually Thank you for watched, clarifying. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure the people at home listening in knew what was happening. J- Jimothy was giving me this <laughs> weird look, like he was about to uh, surprise sex me. Uh, so we're not gonna have whoa, any that. whoa <laughs> now. <laughs> no, so I actually uh, watched uh, Rush Hour one and two, and oh, uh, all yeah, right, yeah, man. And like, and, and like, I say what you will about the movie, as, as corny as it is. I love like, those movies. Buddy cop wise, man, they're on. I mean, I, I besides like Mel Gibson and you know 
and, and, and lethal weapon and all that stuff but i i thoroughly enjoy watching one like one is really cool um and there's this outtake on rush hour two and i still say it all the time whenever like someone bombs something like i always say like he's not gonna be in rush hour three and like that's <laughs> like <laughs> like that's like one of my favorite lines ever and it didn't even make it to the movie for obvious reasons. obvious reasons yeah the yeah, obvious reasons but and then like it will in the weird turn of events like i was done watching rush hour one and two and i watched it yesterday um and then i was just flipping through the tv guide and i saw saw it was on it's the same dude the the villain from rush hour one is actually the cop in in, in saw one and i didn't re- re- even realize that well at least i think it is now that i <laughs> i should have i should have fact checked that but uh but no rush hour one like it, it's actually has a lot of action and like, there's a lot of people in there that you know you did. I didn't remember being in that movie, um, but it was it was I I wasn't I wasn't bored. Like you know what I mean? Like some of the like the Fast and Furious movies, I get a little bit of bored. I'm like, all right, cool. Like you were saying, like in the beginning, Derek, uh, like with like the telenovela kind of stories. It's like, all right, we get it. Like love, whatever. Michelle Rodriguez dies three times. We get it. Exactly. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's like, uh, but no, it was it's just a fun movie. I I love it. Yeah, no, that's, you know, I actually, a fun piece of action movie news that I read the other day was there is a rumor that for Beverly Hills Cop 4, it is going to be a crossover with Bad Boys. What? Yeah, that's what I, I, that's what I read today. uh, That there was a, there's a potential like of crossing those two films over uh, in to make them canon um, for the next, like next installment. I have a question. Like, how do y'all how do y'all feel about that? Both of y'all. It's crazy. I love it. And, and what about I you, love Timothy? It. I don't know. I mean, the, I mean, it's crazy enough that it might work. My biggest complaint, though, is that if I'm going to get a new Beverly Hills Cop movie, I kind of want it to stand on its own a little bit. But I mean, I still what? haven't seen Bad Boys for Life yet, though. Oh, either you, so. you got to watch it, man. You know, I so, will. Uh, so, I mean, the thing is, like, when it's so hard, man, because I don't know about you, Jimothy, but when I thought about franchises, I had some very specific rules, which is very uncommon for me because I'm not a, I'm not a rule wait, guy. Wait, wait. I, I have to cut you off, Derek, because I yeah. asked you all that question for a specific reason. And how dare you all, before what? you go into your rules, how dare you all be happy about Beverly, Hill, Beverly Hills Cop and Bad Boys fusing together and not liking John Wick and the Matrix Theory? How dare you? I digress. What are your rules? <laughs> I'm not even gonna. Uh, I'm not even gonna dignify that with a response. What? Oh yeah, because you can't have one. It's. It... <laughs> oh tank. I digress. <laughs> oh, Go, continue. Jesus Christ. Continue. <laughs> Christ. Okay. Go ahead, uh, sir. <laughs> I don't even know where he's going with that. You just, no, you had uh, rules. Yeah, oh, rules so, of, oh, yeah. So yeah, the, the franchise rules. So uh, number one, my understanding of franchises is it has to be more than three movies. Um, okay. I could not include, to me personally, could not include television adaptations. Um, like Indiana Jones. It's only got, it's got four, but it also has a TV show as well. Young Indiana Jones as well. Uh, not canon. Well, I mean, it is, I guess, in a degree, but um, yeah. TV show adaptations. And I personally like ones that contain the same characters or not or main characters within the movies. So I could not include bad boys because there's only three of them. Um, same thing with John Wick because theoretically there's only three as of right now because uh, the fourth one hasn't come out yet. Sorry, Tay. Matrix is also off the table oh. as well because there's yeah. only three of them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those those were kind of like those were kind of my guiding principles for franchise franchise movies. So it has to be greater than three. But no, John, 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 John Wick is definitely not going to be the Matrix. <laughs> Whatever. I'm kidding. Okay, I'm, I'll let you, know, you have your... I know. No, 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 no. It's not even the fact that it, if it if it does happen or it doesn't happen, the fact that y'all downplayed it and y'all got excited about over Beverly Hills Cop and and uh, and and uh, Bad Boys. How dare y'all? <laughs> <laughs> I love when this show goes into real dumb directions. <laughs> did did, huh? I, did you both lose audio at the same time? No, I was waiting for I. Oh, I was no. just I was just 
waiting for so oh, I, I push on my bad I pushed the mute button that's my bad no worries so um yeah it's funny because I didn't I mean I didn't necessarily think of any rules I didn't get as in depth with Derek uh but weirdly the, the film franchise I chose meets all of those uh so what is yeah. your uh, what is your film franchise uh so I mean I, obviously like there's a lot you know I, I we could talk about um uh would i qualify rocky as an action film franchise there's a lot of fighting in it uh but the franchise i chose and it's near to dear near and dear to my heart um uh, is the death wish franchise not including the fucking remake um oh, great. uh five movies in and there isn't one movie i dislike i mean four and five um are you know a little bit more forgettable than the other films in the franchise but still really good i mean the fifth one has michael parks in it as the villain and i think he's fucking great in it um but first off it's an, what an interesting such an interesting uh film and film history and you know um the, the original much like a rambo much like a rocky you know the original death of wish was kind of considered like a legitimate movie it was you know um wasn't as exploitative as they became later on, especially two and three. Um, but, you know, at the time, it was very much of the time in 70s New York. Uh, it was cr- rampant with crime. And, um, you know, it was, you know, you don't have movies like The Warriors for no reason. Um, it was, you know, it seemed almost lawless. Like crime was rampant. People like drug, drug addiction was rampant. Um, so, you know, based off of a, a book by the same name, Death Wish, um, which the, the book was trying to tell a completely different story. It was basically saying how um, vigilanteism is wrong and how we shouldn't, you know, it's it's not healthy to, to think that you know what, you know, is, is uh, considered justice and taking the law in your own hands is, is makes you know better than the people that upset you, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, um, the screenwriters and the filmmakers kind of went in a different direction and a much more glorified sense um you know um which the the movie has this very like radical right wing kind of vibe to it at, at, at least in 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 hindsight and retrospect it definitely feels that way um uh but you know with that being said um you know taking the movies for what they present face first and again the first one it has you have these rich you know people these rich you know, affluent white New Yorkers who are mad at the crime. And um, and then, you know, Paul Kersey's, the character Paul Kersey was a very weird film character. And he kind of transforms over, you know, from a kind of a sympathetic, you know, uh, father slash husband to almost like a fucking superhero. And like this, come like a super spy by the end, he becomes like a weird fucking uh, mustachio James Bond. Um, a very interesting character. And the, the, the problem, the changes he goes through but you know, he starts off as this like very um affluent architect and and developer who is part of the reason that you know there's such wealth disparity in new york he's sort of contributing to that and this is weird sort of um angle that they take in the first one but the first is a great movie it's an actually like i said it's a very uh very much in the, in the sense of a lot of those 70s films like Taxi Driver and the Paul Schrader films where they're like hard edged and very like brutal, but, you know, intelligent and sophisticated enough that like, you know, critics kind of embraced it. But, but you know, and as much as I love Death Wish and it has some really great moments, um, um, I don't think it really becomes what it is until the second film, which, you know, people have complain that the only good one is death wish one and i think those people are uh wrong but i can see their point because by the second one it does become super exploitative that like there's a really i mean the second one has some really rough rape sequences and it's much harder to watch the violence is ramped up you know to a much higher degree um the violence and 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 the um overall film just feels uglier and sleazier but in a way that's like servicing the story because again here's a guy who sort of you know paul kersey you know um the character went through this crazy thing sort of you know did all this violent stuff and tried to put it in his past and is trying to like 
you know, uh, move on with his life and he has like found a new lady. In fact, the theme of those movies is if you date Paul Kersey, you're going to fucking die a horrible well, death. Okay. So that's what I was going to ask you is like, is this just like kind of the take it franchise of like how, how, how I love how uh, Deadpool says in his movies, there's just a point where you're just considered a bad parent because you yeah. keep losing people like Paul Kersey's character. Like how many people can you date and then also have, uh, you know, get yourself killed and yeah. or have your daughter get killed. Yeah, which is like the premise for the second one um, yeah. which I and then and then then the fourth one or the fifth is it the fifth one no, so fourth well the fourth one is his girlfriend's daughter that so it is yeah for the fourth yeah. one is his girlfriend's daughter so uh exactly so again the films are definitely not perfect but here's the thing um uh and you know by the fifth one he's you know it's in the early 90s he's way too old to be an action star um kind of very like almost laughable kind of like robert de niro in the irishman trying to like be all like tough guy kicking people's ass and it just looks like a looks kind of embarrassing so he's just too old to move but um which we all get there um but the films even i think the fourth and fifth one the fourth and fifth have like their own vibe especially the the, the fifth one um to me, I think the pinnacle of the series, and it's the definitely the most ludicrous of them all, is Death Wish 3. Um, you know, Death Wish 3 is probably, it's definitely in my top 10, just a movie yeah. I can watch over and over and over. Is that, a, is that Crackdown? Like, Crackdown's or, 4. That's when they, they, that's the 80s one where they like, it was all anti-drugs and it's like, it was like a sure. fucking, it was like a after school special about drugs. George um, So, um, Death Wish 3 is the one where like he basically goes back to see his his um his war buddy and like it becomes like it's like Mad Max it's like they he, like the basically people are like living in ruins and fucking gang, like criminals are everywhere and um uh yeah it's it's over the top and ludicrous um uh but it, it but it's still um it's still like my favorite because it's so over the top and so ludicrous and such a cartoon. Um, you know, it ends with him fucking literally shooting the main gang, like the main villain, the main gang leader oh, with a fucking bazooka. So like, it's so over the top and ludicrous, but um, you know, uh, all the cast is really great. Um, you know, uh, the guy who plays the, um, uh, the main, gang leader um i don't know if he's ever done anything like i don't know if he's done um i should probably look that up i don't even know who uh, let me take a look oh uh, actually never mind it's gavin o'hurley he okay yeah so he's done a ton of shit actually he's sort of a yeah so but anyways so yeah. but gavin o'hurley he who plays the main villain he's so fucking sleazy and he's so fucking hateable he's one of my favorite movie villains you want to see this guy get his ass murdered or kicked so bad um but it's so over the top and ludicrous but it's so much fun that's the thing is it's like it you know and then that's where people really like sort of point the uh, finger of it being super like uh you know like a uh like a gun nuts like wet dream and it's basically like fuck you know you know anybody who's poor uh you know is should die and there's all these different you know, let me ask you, of, ask you a question where if you were to compare this and say Dirty Harry, mm-hmm. which like which one is your? Do you still think Death Wish is like your favorite compared to like the? Uh, yeah, because I, so I love. I mean, I, I I also love. I mean, that's t- even more. So Dirty Harry is even far more of a reactionary kind of film. Like it's like a way more of a like you know whatever you know whatever you know might makes right and all that stuff. But the you know the first two uh dirty harry movies are great but then you know by the time it gets to deadpool and stuff which you know i've heard people kind of try to defend it these years i'm like it's it's fine it's not a terrible movie but it's it's definitely sort of phoned in um there's some cool aspects of about it but um i i think the first two dirty harry movies are great but to me like it sort of loses steam after that um uh and I mean, again, I love, um, it, it's so hard because, you know, politically, you know, Clint Eastwood, uh, especially as he's gotten older, is, you know, is uh, kind of 
once you start arguing with chairs, I don't know how, how much, you know, fandom I can give you, but fucking great director, great writer, and a great actor. I mean, he's always been an incredible actor. Um, and, you know, he's, he's charisma personified, especially as, uh, you know, uh, Dirty Harry is Harry. Oh, what well, he's got an Irish name too. Um, I was gonna say I just say Harry Warden, but then I was like, "No, it's my bloody no, Valentine." Exactly. <laughs> um, but you know, he's. He, uh, trust me, I I could put that on there too. Again, I have a little bit. There's especially now with like uh, how prevalent like we were learning about you know police corruption and you know excessive violence and excessive forces by police like like i guess it's really not that much politically than than saying it with like you know a vigilante at least like with you know um with paul kersey that character like you can you can at least empathize with his loss and like you know the brutal horrific terrible way that people he's cared about have died so i guess that's sort of lets you off the hook a little bit but i mean i like mean, but i do like them both i love the dirty i mean um if I were, like I said, if I were hard pressed to say which would be my favorite, um, I again, Death Wish is uh, uh, Death Wish three, so um, that's my favorite. like it's so nothing beats uh, you know uh, the sheer excess of um, of uh, of Death Wish three, and and again the thing that I give it you know which is again. Even Death Wish Five, which is I think like not doesn't have the biggest following, I still think is a great movie. And Michael Parks is fucking great in it. They have it probably has the best villain in in the um, in the, the film franchise. So, um, but you know, um, you know, I mean, there I get I, I'm gonna probably regret saying this as I think about you know uh, the you know. But besides Dirty, Dirty Harry and Magnum Force, thinking about Sudden Impact and like rewatching, maybe rewatching Deadpool and stuff and The Enforcer, and you know, uh, I might kind of kick myself in the ass and change my opinion, but um, no, because even that, even by The Enforcer, it's it, it's such a fucking mail in. It's at that point, it's literally like definitely just a cash in. So I'm going to give it to Death Wish, and again, just for the even the sheer excess of a Death, Death, Death Wish three. But again, every movie's great. You know, it starts off as a very like um almost like a poignant character study with something to say. And then the second one, it just becomes an exploitative action film, but also a really good one. And then by the third one, it's becomes a fucking like a canon movie because it, it was produced by Canon and it fucking feels like a canon movie because everything is so uh over the top and ramped up uh, in the most fun way possible. So yeah, Death Wish is definitely my choice. Solid. That's a solid pick. I like Death Wish. It's uh, Charles Bronson. I, I don't know if I'm sure you've seen it, but the, the guy who looks like yes, Charles I, Bronson look alike. I, like, dear God. Uh, De- in fact, there's there's another movie. He just came out with another movie and he's fighting a fucking slasher. Like a Jason yeah. Voorhees type guy. I saw that. I, I saw like I heard about that. I heard rumblings yeah. of that. But I forget un- what it was un- called. But uncanny. I do, I do not know how anybody could look so much like Charles Bronson. But it's fucking does. crazy. Yeah, it, it is crazy. Um, yeah, it, this you know franchises was actually a lot harder than I thought because there's there's so many great to your point. Like you could change your mind like every minute. Um, and my original thought was I was actually going to say James Bond because it is such a long running franchise and it really has something for everybody depending on like what type of bond do you like because the bond changes every i think that was the one thing i really like about james bond it's not what i ended up going with but i, I really like james bond because james bond always was my understanding it was a, it was a moniker and it's not tied directly to it's not tied directly to a person's actual identity it's just 007 is tied to um to who they are like within the organization so it could be anybody right uh, yep. so i was like well that's kind of a cool premise but there's so many and it would just be, that could be a whole episode in itself is talking about James Bond. So I went with my, my all time go-to uh, action movie, uh, which was Die Hard. Um, so I, I know that a lot of people are, are not huge Die Hard fans um, as, they've, as they've gotten on in the years. Um, I mean, the I think, f- first one is probably the most beloved of all action films, but it's one of those cases where, yeah, the sequels, definitely don't get that same amount of love yeah. 
I actually think that in my personal list, <laughs> um, three is probably my all time favorite. Um, it's, it's my favorite. So I'm right there with you. So, but I think it, kind of in the grand scheme of things, you, you have a character that, uh, I think has a lot of, like, there's a lot of backstory and baggage, like behind them, which I, I do like in a main character. I really like a main character is a little more like, a, it was a little more turmoil. I think it's very much like, you know, kind of what you were describing with like Death Wish and Dirty Harry. It's like, there's a point of kind of, and we talked about this for Fast and Furious, right? There's a point of ridiculousness of like how much bad stuff can happen to one person. Exactly. Um, <laughs> over, over a period of time, like, and, and I think Die Hard like fits the bill wholeheartedly. Um, you know, I, I think personally, what like what I like about the progression of the character, like with, in the third one, is like just how rock bottom after the second one because you know you leave leave the first one he saves the day leaves with his wife by the time second one rolls around he seems to have made amends with his wife he's on his way they reunite at the end they go off in the golf cart with dennis franz's twin brother (laughs) and uh but by the time the third one rolls around right he's a drunk like he's suspended his wife has ditched him his kids hate him um you know, he's, he's a mess. And then he's got to go, like, fight, uh, you know, fight Simon, Simon Gruber, Gruber, Hans Gruber's, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, brother. Um, fun fact about that movie, too. I don't know if you've ever if you've ever read this or not, but uh, they filmed, like, three different endings to that movie, apparently. I did, yep. And uh, did, did you hear about the one where they blow away Simon Gruber with a rocket launcher? I think I probably yeah. did, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, the original ending was that Simon gets away and uh, John McClane gets blamed for his escape. So he goes even further down the rabbit hole. So he spends his like almost like two months hunting him down. He finds him in Hungary and he plays the game of Simon says with a rocket launcher with a sight removed. So you don't know which side is which. And Simon <laughs> picks wrong and he blows himself up with a. Uh, with a with uh the rocket launcher but they felt it was not die hard enough so uh, <laughs> par- apparently uh they went with the original ending where he, he gets the cable wires snapped around his helicopter and then it crashes but um interesting i think you know to me like <laughs> john mcclain is kind of the the likable schlub that you love to hate um in the movie i i don't know like short of again like short of just having the same bad stuff happen to the same guy like I don't know if he has a ton of redeeming qualities. He's a little bit of, a, in my opinion, like an anti-hero. But I think I, it's kind of what I like, I like about him. him. Um, I do personally like the fourth one as well. Um, it is ridiculous. Uh, what I I like the cyber crime stuff, man. It's it was one of the time, uh, dude. That's one of the worst <laughs> movies I've seen in the theater. Oh, that hurts. It was it worse than the 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 last one after that, which is a good day to die hard with his son in Russia. Dude, uh-huh. Good Day to Die Hard was one of the most boring movies I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. To me, the third one is like fucking, you know, fantastic. Really sort of is like encapsulate everything that's great about the franchise. And then it fucking jumps the shark hard when fucking John McClane's jumping on top of jet fighters and shit. But it's uh, ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. But is it any more, any more ridiculous than, uh, you know, uh, weird military people homeless people living in ruins and death wish you know what i mean like it's it's fantastical like at best but it's uh it's for whatever reason draws your audience in because they just want more ridiculous like when they they watch a movie so like i i definitely expect when you get to a franchise and you get to the fourth the fifth the sixth movie like at that point like you you know you're in it for the long haul and i i almost think like unless you reboot it get a different director like go in a different style which sometimes people hate um you're you're gonna be in for the same ride you're you're kind of gonna get that phone in script and you're gonna roll, rely heavily on the uh the, the effects now like i know we I, we didn't based on my rules i didn't put bad boys in there but i will say that was the one thing that i liked about bad boys for life is it actually showed aged characters and like what they would legitimately be doing like Martin Lawrence is, you know, he he's a little chubbier in this one. Like he can't can't see too well. Like that's awesome. Like it's the one thing I loved about the Lethal Weapon movies is too is like, uh, which was a close runner up uh, for me because I was on the fourth one. Um, yeah. But you know, Danny Glover, man, he's he's always he's always too old for this shit. But he always looks like he's too old for the too, too old. Too. Yeah, he always looks. He, he doesn't. He's not spry. 
Guy always wears a suit. Never see that guy in jeans, ever. Um, unless he's in the tub naked, which, again, I always find super weird in all those those movies. Why is he inviting his family in when he's in the tub with his ding dong <laughs> out? I don't know. It seems weird. Why are you bringing your dad a cake for retirement when he's got no bubbles in the tub? It just, it rubs me the wrong way. But uh, regardless, I, I do think there's some great franchises. For me, I think Die Hard is... is uh, just one of those ones that I just could continually watch over and over again. But again, it just depends on the day. It could be, that's the great thing about franchises is, is you really, you have a variety to choose from, right? So um, there, there could be a day that it is all about Death Wish or you know, other ones I had, I thought, you know, Universal Soldier, which we've talked about, or um, obviously we have uh, Beverly Hills Cop or Lethal Weapon or James Bond. I mean, there's, there's a ton of them, right? Kickboxer, um, there's a bunch of blood sports out there. Right, I mean, Kickboxer is um, one that it's fun, funny because I'm actually weirdly obsessed with the uh, Kickboxer franchise and with um, uh, Sasha Mitchell, who was the, basically who was the star after Jean Claude Van Damme, and the fact that he was like this fucking sitcom actor who was legitimately like a legit martial artist, but you know he played this dumb, like completely airhead boyfriend on. Uh, some sitcom um but then he was also uh, making these really bad low budget um uh, kung fu movies but um i definitely feel like for me uh i feel like if i'm listing my favorites uh i definitely have to give a recommend like a uh you know a uh special uh shout out to uh the undisputed franchise um uh while i think the last one boyka isn't is definitely the weakest in the in the in the franchise um, I think even from the first one, which was a def- complete, I mean, Undisputed was about two Wesley Snipes and Ving Rhames being like a, like a legit boxer with, you know, going to prison and stuff. It was a completely different movie. It was a boxing movie and it was like more of a kind of a drama where Undisputed 2 is basically just a fucking action movie. Um, and you had the fucking, you know, the, uh, um, it just became like, you know, a completely different beast but it the second one on is kind of what's really where it's found its voice and then by unspewed uh three which i think is the best in the series um uh it really is like i could watch that movie and over again is it a good movie most people would probably wouldn't agree with that but for a certain segment of the population it's fucking fantastic the the all the the fight sequences are incredible um i love all the actors in it um Michael Jai White, uh, you know, who's in, who plays, he's the, you know, sort of the main name. He's the hero. Uh, he takes over for the Wesley Snipes, you know, of the, he takes over the Wesley Snipes character role. Um, they're not playing the same character, but it's like the same role um, for Undisputed 2. You know, he's great. I love Michael Jai White. And he's, like I said, legitimately a, a great action star. But, you know, it's, I don't know, I, I love it. And I feel like I try, it's for people who say they're, fans of action films i'm like if you've never seen them I'm like you have to see them and you know even like i said two three and four um are their own beasts uh like they they feel different from the first undisputed and the same way like we've talked about you know rambo uh or you know uh, first blood completely unlike ram the rest of the rambo franchises that even when it's saying is different uh the first rocky movie feels different than rocky three and rocky four um uh, so it's very similar, but I think it's even more drastic in this one. But um, but again, they're great. I, I think all four are great, or at, definitely at least worth watching. Like I said, uh, Boyka maybe is a little bit more one note than the rest of them, um, uh, because you're you don't have that dynamic of Boyka and a different fighter like playing off of each other. It's just basically like it just becomes like another like sort of a, almost like a Jean Claude Van Damme kind of action movie, but. Uh, but it's good. Like I said, I still enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like that's my special accommodation as a, as a special runner up is the undisputed franchise. Sure. Undisputed for the, uh, for the underdog honorable mention. There you okay. go. Honorable yeah, mention. Maybe. That was the phrase I literally couldn't think of. <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got you, buddy. Yeah. I know what's, I know what's in your brain. <laughs> yeah, man, lots, to lots, lots, of, <laughs> lots, lots of good franchises. Uh, to, to check out. Um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good conversation to have because I think the more, especially in Hollywood, right, where the more things come back around even 5, 10, 15 years later, right, uh, what was three can become four and then all of a sudden you have a new spinoff or a new franchise or new uh, new folks and then like, like 
to your point, undisputed or kickboxer, right? You know, they, they come back around by the fifth one, right? Van Damme's back in it, right? Uh, David, David Batista is in it. So exactly. I think there's, there's a, you never know when something can become a franchise, but I think that's, you know, a lot of people see that as uh, they want to continue a story. Other people see it as a cash grab, but uh, I think either way, you know, like they can be fun. Um, definitely when you take a look at it. So I will say though, uh, you know, as we wrap up uh, though, um, I, I forgot, I was going to mention this at the, at the, the top and I forgot. Um, so, you know, in preparation of this, I realized that there was a new, um, you know, one of the Fallen series, like Olympus has fallen. Oh. So uh, the Angel has fallen. Mm -hmm. And I really loved Olympus has fallen. It came out, you know, it's like that weird thing where like movies, like there's this weird like m group mind think that you have like two comet movies come out in the same year. You have two volcano movies come out in the same year. And then you had two movies about like the president. The White House. The, yeah, so, um, but, you know, I really liked it. I, I thought of the two, I thought, you know, Olympus Has Fallen was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I thought as the films went on, they, you know, weren't as good. But I was like, oh, I'll give Angel Has Fallen. Literally turned it off halfway through. I was just like, this movie's so goddamn dumb and so over the top and unbelievable and, fr and just frustrating as a movie. I'm like, how the fuck did, like, it's like, dude, pull the trigger bury this fucking franchise, stop making these movies. I don't know anybody who even likes them, but I had to throw that in there because uh, I was like, dude, I was like stoked because I was like, this is perfect. It kind of goes into our what we wanted to talk about this week and I was kind of interested in well, two very hey. uh, enthusiastic thumbs down. Maybe uh, maybe the fourth one will be Gerard Butler will be president and then he's got to be protected by a new guy. That's right. That's, that's like Gerard Butler, but different. Exactly. There'll be Angel has risen. That'll be. It's, I feel like Gerard Butler must have pissed somebody. Like, how the fact that that guy's not been in a Marvel movie yet? Because that dude looks like a guy that would be in the Marvel universe. I mean, he looks like a. I mean, you know, from three hundred on, he's always been like, you know, like that guy. But I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe a uh, Kevin Feige, Feige, whatever his name is, uh, has like. They maybe they have a beef or something, but it's just weird that he hasn't been in a Marvel movie, but he's been in a shit ton of really bad like direct to video movies. And what was that gamer? Did you see Gamer? Yeah. Like that. Again, weird that he's was in that and he hasn't been in a Marvel movie, but whatever. Maybe you never know, right? Marvel Phase Four. That's true. You never know. We will, we will see. Sorry, be... I got disconnected, but I'm back. But hey, y'all are talking about superhero movies. And, you know, before we go, I did want to mention that Michael Keaton is in early talks with DC to reprise his role as Batman in the new Flash movie. Yep. Yay. Yay. Excited about Michael Keaton. Not excited about Ezra Miller, but I'm super excited about Michael Keaton. <laughs> Poor Ezra Miller. <laughs> well, well, the thing is, what's interesting, though, too, is it's not just going to be Michael Keaton portraying Batman, but it's supposed to be Michael Keaton portraying the same version of Batman. Yeah. Which is pretty interesting, so... Multiverses, you know? Yep, they, um, exactly. Introducing the multiverse. And then was... it introduces Batman Beyond. That's exactly. Awesome. Which, yeah. if you've ever seen those memes of, like, I always thought it should have been Clint Eastwood because it, you know, uh, Kevin Conroy uh, kind of even has a little bit of a Clint Eastwoody tone in his voice yeah. when he plays that character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, again, when, when people started posting those photos of Michael Keaton, old Michael Keaton, I'm like, yeah, that'd be cool, man. Let's do it. And so now yeah. we might actually get it, so... I the only reason I don't like Ezra Miller is uh, I've said this before. I think they made his flash dumb. Like and he, I'm sorry, but like I just Barry Allen's not an idiot. Like don't play him no. as an idiot. He was played as he was played as a dum dum in that movie and that annoys me. Um so I just wish they would have written this character a little bit more intelligently. Maybe that'll be different in the Flash movie. Um which is which is great. <laughs> but uh but as of right now, Justice League, Ezra Miller, dum dum. Yeah, no, I mean, the thing is, I, I thought his character was funny, and I'm glad they, I, I thought he was genuinely funny, and usually, you know, uh, that shit would just annoy me. But I actually thought the lines they gave him were, were genuinely kind of funny. But again, um, I don't even think, you know, even super fucking uh, white bread, uh, Garrett Gustin, uh, still isn't the Barry Allen that's in my head from the comics, but he's he is actually at least much closer than the kind of goofball 
wise ass kind of uh yeah i i agree with that i do agree with that i, and I think ezra mill is great and i think he's a uh, I think he. I think what he brought to the Justice League films was much needed because they did need some levity or or that point of view. Um, I just wish it had, wouldn't have been the Flash the same. Like now, if he'd been playing Wally West version of the Flash, which was Kid Flash who became the Flash, and I would have been. I would have had no problem with that um, because Wally West was more of a kind of like a kind of a wise assy kind of like wasn't the same sort of straight arrow kind of like uh um you know goody two shoes you know yeah. uh that that Barry Allen is so anyways but yeah I, I still if Michael Keaton's reprising his role as Batman I'll still I'll be stoked I literally forgot I'm sorry I know we were trying to end this but I did want to say uh as we're talking about this, this is perfect thank you for bringing this up tank uh because I did recently re I also in preparation for this I watched um uh, Batman versus Superman and, and Justice League, uh, even though I'd seen them many times before. Um, and I have to say, kind of taking a step back and not focusing on all the terrible aspects of Batman versus Superman, which there are many terrible aspects about it. Um, I will we'll go on record as saying it's probably the best looking um, big budget superhero movie they've ever done. Uh, there are some sequences or shots in that movie that I think he doesn't get enough credit for. I mean, he's always been a really strong, like visual director. Um, but like visually it's a fucking, I mean, I, but it kind of, it's very uneven, even with that. So there's sometimes it, it it's, it gets a little ham fisted, but otherwise, like I said, there's some really great shots and I, and there's some aspects of it. I still think it's the best version of like comic book style Batman that we've ever seen, even though he's killing fools left and right, which is very much unlike the comic books. Um, but the way that he looks, like you say, he looks like Jim Lee drew him. Uh, but like the full on action sequences, the fighting is very much what comic book Batman has always been. Yes. Um, yes. Kind of, you know, pushing the boundaries of what is, what would, you know, of realism. But well, anyways, I, I, I thought, I was like, I'm going to try to watch this without a critical eye and just sort of take it. And yeah. I, by the end of the movie, I was still like, this is uh, so much of it is unwatchable or very frustrating. But uh, I, I feel like there was, I feel like I, he, it deserved for me to at least point out the things I like about it. Yeah. And if you, I mean, if you really want to see like the, where it was inspired from, like the, the fight with when, when Batman's wearing like that big old suit, just check out uh, Batman uh, Dark Knight Returns Volume One and Two. More so on Volume Two, you'll see that um, when he old old Batman fights you know, Superman. Which I gotta say though, even that kind of made me upset because like the the in the Dark Knight Returns, which is you know many people uh, think that it's probably the best Batman story ever told. I am not one of them. Uh, I think it's good, but I don't think it's one of the best. Um, there's a lot of like things that date it specifically to the eighties and Reaganomics and these different things. But, right. um, but the sequence was much more dramatic. Like their fight in the comic was much more, you know, he's basically like he, Superman gets hit by a nuke first and then like, it's this whole thing. But, but again, I give him a lot of credit because I, I really think the suit, I mean, definitely a visual homage to that Frank Miller art. I think yeah. they did a good job with it. So at least with under, the visuals. So under the red hoods, the best story as far as animated goes. Uh, when Nightwing gives gives Batman that speech, I still love that speech so much. And Look, we talked about uh look, we talked about health and fitness, we gave some great advice, we talked about uh, saving birds, we talked about franchises, we talked about anime that you shouldn't watch, wrapped it off with superhero movies. Dear God, we talked about a lot tonight. We we covered Sorry. all our bases. We we're hitting all the demographics. We call it the Kitchen Sink Podcast, people. And You're welcome. Tank, Tank has lost his voice. He's got no volume. He's talking right now. He's got oh. no volume. Wow. <laughs> so you didn't hear anything that I said, like even about Under the Red Hood? I, I heard. The red, okay. The Red Hood. Sure. Yeah. That's nope, all, we got that one. Okay, y'all. Nope, don't say it again. We really got you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say the speech one more time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, it, it's really, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it, that, that's why we're like the number one podcast in the world, uh, in, my right. heart, in sorry, my heart. Joe, sorry, Joe Rogan, better luck <laughs> next year. Better luck next year, sir. But that being said, speaking of Joe Rogan, you make sure you follow us on Spotify, uh, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. 
follow us on social media. We are on Twitter and on Instagram at Tank Rod Pod. That's T A N K R O D P O D. Uh, forgot how to spell there for a second, but yeah, uh, give us a give us a follow. Let us know what you thought about today's show or any other show that you may have listened to in the past. Um, you know, any other last sentiments before we go, guys? Uh, you know, uh, go. No. Just, uh, just keep on keeping on. Yeah, that was a yeah. visual cue to the end of uh, Death Wish for people who can't see this because it's a podcast, but uh, I just did a visual cue for the end of Death Wish. So that's keep on keeping on. Drink your uh, drink your green juice because uh, that's good for you. Uh, eat lots of kale uh, so you can be uh, as much like Charles Bronson as humanly possible. Also, uh, wear your damn masks. That's it. Yes. yes. Wear your stupid, yes. wear your mask. Be like the Red Hood. Wear Red Hood. Okay, right. Just wear Red Hood. Red yes. Hood mask. Just wear, yeah, wear your damn masks. But, wear but inside. But throw away your white hoods. Do and, not and, wear white hoods. Yes, That's, yes. And yes. throw away your antiquated sense Actually, of Actually, you know what? Don't, and don't wear your red hood if it's got a point. <laughs> If if it's got a point to it too, there are some uh, there are some hoods out there that are um, multicolored. If you're the Grand Wizard, the Wizard, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Just don't wear hoods. Just wear a face mask. That's all we're saying. Wear face mask. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So that being said, I haven't said this in a long time. Thank you again for listening to Go and Commando. And as always, this one's for you, Keanu. This one's for you, Neo slash John Wick. <laughs> slash. Uh, uh, Slash Ted, 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 Logan. Oh, we didn't really talk about that. Next time. Next time. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. <laughs>